When day turns to night and the moon is most bright, shed the king of you and wear the queen. The nine realms will open and your magic be free. Hi, my bling. It's your favorite drag witch, Nova Jupiter Jenkins. My friends call me Nova JJ, and you can too. If you haven't listened to the podcast before, I recommend heading back and listening to the previous episodes so you can get caught up on the sitch with this witch. Oh, my apologies for the lack of a new moon episode this month. As you may have noticed, there has been some sort of interference that has caused a couple of the episodes to arrive back in Mundania a little bit late. I thought maybe it was some sort of natural interference, like the Tenebris Borealis or the migration patterns of Pegasi. But no, it appears that someone, or maybe someone's, doesn't like the podcast. I know I couldn't believe it either, but everyone's a critic. I guess it's possible that it's not about the podcast. Maybe it's some jealous twitch. That's a witch who's a twit. And uh, not only that, but whoever it is also seems to want to keep me out of the heath altogether. Adam had to add some protective runes to the pentagram that he draws for the spell to come here, and even then we almost didn't make it. My hair was a mess. But I'm here now, so hopefully we shouldn't have any more issues. Okay, enough about that. Welcome to the Hunter's Moon and Halloween Hextravaganza. The preparations are in full swing around the Heath, and especially around the city, for one of the most important holidays in the Heath. Of course, Hugo and Munzee wouldn't miss it. Oh, that reminds me. Munzee, can you go find Gulia? I want to ask her if she's seen Gerald. <laughs> Thanks, precious. So this full moon is special for more reasons than just the holiday. It's also my birth moon. It was a hunter's moon when Adam first performed the spell that transported him here and transformed him into me. In fact, it's a big contributing factor for my being chosen as a book hunter by Kala Mudutu, along with my love of books, of course. So it's a triple hextravaganza. I wouldn't miss it. As a birth moon present to myself, I'm crocheting a spiderweb poncho in Halloween-y colors, black, orange, and purple. I'll see if I can send a picture through when I'm done. So... I'm not just using a regular crocheting technique, I'm doing what's called Tunisian crochet. So for those of you who don't know what Tunisian crochet is, it's sort of a cross between knitting and crochet, using one single crochet hook that is as long as a knitting needle. It seems to have popped up around the middle of the 19th century and may not have actually originated in Tunisia. It's gone by many names, including Afghan crochet, but it's most commonly known as Tunisian crochet these days. You can create some fun fabrics that are unique from both knit and crochet. Well, in Celtic circles, this holiday is known as Samhain, and the term is often used by modern witches, Wiccans, and Pagans to refer to the holiday in a more religious context and to distance it from the crass commercial holiday that is celebrated by a large portion of the North American population. Now, while I love a party as much as the next girl, I have to say I'm not a fan of the slutty booze fest that Halloween has become for adults. And that's not to slut shame. If you want to be a slutty booze hound, more power to you. As long as you're safe about it, of course. Many people see Halloween as an opportunity to get out of your own skin, be someone you're not, to let loose and go wild, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just not my thing. As with all holidays, it can mean different things to different people, and uh, next I'd like to talk about what it means to me. So there are three main components to a Nova JJ Halloween. The first is to recognize bad habits or negative aspects of myself that I would like to shed and leave them with my jack-o'-lantern at the end of the holiday so that they can rot away with him. So I meditate on them, visualize them in my mind, visualizing either an object that represents the aspect or visualize myself engaging in negative behavior. And as I visualize, I write down the aspect and will the image to flow through the pen and into the paper and then when the night's festivities are over and it's time to send Jack to the compost heap, I replace his candle with the list of negative aspects and off they go to rotten down. So in that vein, before I move on to the second component, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite Halloween carols to sing as I decorate my pumpkin. 
Let's find the perfect pumpkin down at the pumpkin patch. Halloween's a coming, I've got to find a jack. Jack o lantern, Jack o my heart, where are you hiding? Come out of the dark. This one's full of spiders, that one's full of rot. Too much evil inside her, that one hasn't got a lot. Jack o lantern, Jack o my heart. Where are you hiding? Come out of the dark. I'll fill you with light. You'll banish my fear. Your grin burning bright with hope for the year. Jack o' lantern, Jack o' my heart. Where are you hiding? Come out of the dark. Light the way for my loved ones visiting tonight. The veil is thin and we'll have fun, oh you welcome sight. Jack o' lantern, Jack o' my heart, where are you hiding? Come out of the dark. When the night is over, ride away to hell. Take my sorrows with you, you've done your duty well. Jack o' lantern, Jack o' my heart. Where are you hiding? Come out of the dark. The second component of a Nova JJ Halloween is to plant the seeds of the positive habits I want to cultivate in the new year. This involves just a teeny tiny bit of a sacrifice. No, not animal sacrifice, sillies. We're human. Just sacrificing a pomegranate. So again, with the visualization, I visualize the positive habits that I want to bring about in the new year. I will them into the pomegranate and I cut the pomegranate in half uh, and devour half of it. And then the other half gets buried along with a jack-o'-lantern and the jack-o'-lantern along with the negative habits that I've written down become the fertilizer in which the seeds of the positive habits get to grow in the new year. The next component of Anova JJ Halloween is to honor the dead, especially those we have lost in the past year, to mourn their passing from this plane, celebrate their lives, and wish them safe travels on their continued journey. This involves lighting a special candle for the dead, and if there's anyone specific in my heart who has passed this year, I'll address them with my wishes for a safe passage through the forest of the night to the warm light of the summer lands where they can recuperate before starting out on the next leg of their journey. Or if someone died before they could resolve their karmic lesson, I'll light the candle to try and speed their way out of the chaos that they have to fight through before repeating their life and their lesson. Oh, and one component that I almost forgot is the tarot reading. So... For our tarot reading this moon, I'll be using a special spread called the Three Corpses Spread. So this spread is a little different in that it's really half of a reading. It represents the descent of the masculine divine into the underworld. There's no question that things have been pretty terrible in the world lately. And so while these cards may paint a bleak picture, they are not the end. Also, I'll say right now as we are heading into the darkness, the cards become harder to read, and my interpretations are a little less sure. So there's a card representing each of our three corpses, along with cards that represent how those corpses... There's a card representing each of our three corpses, along with cards that represent how the corpse is sent on its way to its destination. So our first corpse is the warrior, felled in the midst of battle and being sent off with a Viking funeral. The card coming up for the warrior themselves is the Page of Swords, reversed. This is a card of spies and of secrets revealed. There are a number of people in positions of power who have done some pretty terrible things, which isn't new. I think this card represents the belief that the crimes of the powerful being revealed would help to bring them down. And the fact that it hasn't brought them down and has really only emboldened them, and so this warrior has fallen. The next card represents the boat that carries the warrior away. And the card here is the Four of Cups. This is a card of wariness, disgust, and dissatisfaction. 
the disgust that we feel when these people in power continue to get away with their crimes, and the weariness that comes from fighting for so long. They carry the warrior away across the water into the darkness. The next card represents the flaming arrow shot at the departing boat. The card we have here is the Knight of Wands, which is a card of adventure and spiritual rescue. The Knight of Wands is the warrior's compatriot who shines a light in the darkness and ignites the flame that will carry the warrior to heaven. These are the people who will continue to fight. Just because one warrior has fallen does not mean that the battle is lost. And the last card for the warrior is the Stars of Heaven, or Valhalla to some, where the warrior will be carried to rest. And here we have the Two of Wands. This is a card of ambition, resolution, courage. As we mourn for the fallen warrior, we will remember these ideals that they embody and that we can find when we look within ourselves. Okay, our next corpse is the martyr. This is a different kind of warrior, one who stands up for their beliefs with words and protest, even though it might mean their death. The card coming up for the martyr is the Eight of Swords. This is a card of freedom and liberation and represents people who stand up for freedom at the cost of their lives. The next card represents the mob that gathers to watch the execution that is complicit in the theft of freedom. The card here is the King of Swords reversed. This is a card of cruelty and barbarity. It hides beneath a thin sheen of civility and the sacrifice of freedom in the name of security. Behind it, though, is pleasure at the suffering of others or the maintenance of one's own freedom at the expense of others, or even pulling someone down in resentful anticipation that they might win freedom when others are too lazy or cowardly to take for themselves. Next step is the weapon that the establishment uses to torture and execute the martyr. And here we have the world reversed. This is a card of delays and hesitation and represents the fighting of progress and the attempt to roll back the rights won by minorities or the attempt to block rights not yet won in places that prosecute people just for existing. The last card for the martyr is the blood of the martyr that spills on the ground. The card coming up here is the sun. The sun is a card of optimism and action, which may seem a little counterintuitive, but here it represents the people who are inspired by the martyr's sacrifice to take up the fight for freedom themselves. So our last corpse is the sage, the wise old man who has made it to the end of his days. The card coming up for the sage is judgment. Here, this is a card of forgiveness, karma, and responsibility. The sage has the opportunity to leave his life free from the burdens of anger and resentment. He can forgive those who have trespassed against him just as those he has wronged can forgive him in his final moments. He will be judged for the deeds of his life in due time, and so his friends and family can let him go in peace. The next card represents time, the inevitable marching onward of everything that brings us too soon to the close of our days. And the card here is the Ten of Wands reversed. This is a card of perseverance. As time marches on, so must we. It is only through dedication and perseverance that we can hope to reach the last stages of our life, ready to face our turn on the scales of judgment. And next up is the card that represents the coffin that will bear the sage down into the waiting arms of Mother Earth. Here we have the Queen of Cups. This is a warm, nurturing, and healing card. Many consider the grave to be a final resting place, but it's really just a resting place. And deep within the earth can be the best place to enter into the underworld. The last card for the sage and the last card in our spread represents the displaced earth, the obstacle that we need to move aside to create the grave and the doorway to the underworld. And the card here is the King of Cups reversed. 
This is a card of dishonesty. In order for the sage to truly leave this world behind and enter the next phase of the journey, he must set aside the lies that we tell ourselves to comfort us and help us sleep at night. They will not help him now, just like they will not help the people in power in the long run. Munzee? Where's Gulia? <coughs> that is troubling. Two ghosts disappearing? Something is going on, and I still haven't found any of the texts on ghost magic I thought might be able to help. I was hoping not to have to do this, but it seems I have no choice. I'm going to have to find a librarian. <coughs> It'll be okay, I'll be careful. You have to run, my bling. I hope you have a wicked Samhain or Halloween or Day of the Dead or whatever else you celebrate. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you might find us. And I'll leave you with another of my favorite Halloween carols called Who's Knocking on the Spirit Board? Knock, knock, knock. Who's knocking on the spirit board? Knock. Knock, knock, sister, is that you? I love you. Knock, 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 sister, please don't leave me again. Knock, 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 your sister is in the darkness. Knock, 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 and soon you'll join her, my sweet.